Hi, Bill. Um, I would like to say thank you uh, because as my tutor, you brought me marvelous, a great session about photo writing. So did I? Yeah. So w would you like to share with us uh, with some information about how photo writing can benefit the learners in their writing? Yes, photo reading is interesting because it is not really reading. It's a process for taking access to what you need to learn from written material. So it's fantastic for people who are studying, people who are studying, say, for MBAs or degrees, college students, anyone who needs to learn rapidly. Because photo reading really is giving yourself access to written information. But it's almost like downloading a file from the internet. You download the book visually into your unconscious and then you go looking for the information you want from that material. And so photo reading requires that you start with knowing exactly what you want to get from the material that you're about to photo read. Right. And then you go looking for the answers to that material in this unconscious download that you've made. So it's a very different method from normal reading. And most people can find the information they want in maybe a fifth to a tenth of the time that we normally spend reading and all yeah, it's very fast actually. So just now we mentioned about uh, the process. Do you mean that uh, photo reading helps us to improve our learning ability to learn? Oh yes, because photo reading is actually called the photo reading whole mind system because it uses not only your conscious mind, which is where most teaching and learning happens, but it uses the much greater resource of your unconscious mind. And you're combining the vast um, capacity of both minds and you engage your body as well because anyone who attends a photo reading course knows we do an awful lot of moving around as Great. well as yeah. just looking at materials. Yeah, so um, as I remember there are a lot of uh, interesting games yeah. Yeah, in that session. So what do you think this game is for? Well again, um, the body works in a very interesting way. The brain has two sides and each side of the brain is specialised in, in certain activities. So this side of the brain is really dealing with writing, reading words and structure and logic. The left side. Yeah, the left side. And this side of the brain is dealing with movement, colour, sensations without the language attached. We could almost call this the conscious mind and this the unconscious mind. When we do movements which cross over the centre of the body, so we do movements crossing over this way, for yeah. example, and throwing balls around and shifting around and sharing with other people. Our learning abilities accelerate. It really is not only um, a way of connecting with the material you want in written material, it's an accelerated learning training program. It's a program that teaches you how to learn anything. Mm, yeah, great. So uh, can you compare with speed reading and photo reading. So what's the difference between them? Yes, the difference is speed reading is reading. Just trying to do it faster and it requires lots of energy. And what we've discovered is most people that end up learning speed reading give up after a short time because it's too hard work. The interesting thing about photo reading is it's not reading. Right. So even though it has reading-like processes in it, they're really search methods to find the information you're looking for very fast. They're not reading as you know. And so speed reading really is a fully conscious mind process. Unfortunately, the conscious mind is extremely limited in yeah. how much it can do at any one time. With the unconscious, the right mm -hmm. brain, you have a huge capacity for parallel processing. Your, your unconscious can do many, many, many things at once. It recognises the patterns in everything. None of that is happening in speed. So speed reading really is just ordinary reading done faster with more energy. In it. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Photo reading is no effort at all. In fact, it's like playing. Yeah, people so are usually shocked at how easily they learn what they're learning. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, most of my learners found they just increase their reading speed by minimum five times or even more or ten times. Yeah. So even when people go back to their normal reading style but with the methods you learn in yeah. photo reading, all that you do, you, you take in information much faster anyway. So your eyes move rhythmically from left yeah. to right. 
and you're not reading the words, you're just taking in the meaning of what you're as a person. Yeah. So that's that's really the difference. Yeah, so this makes the whole process very interesting. Oh yes. Yeah. Great. Great. So um, as you know, so most of my learners are just teenagers, you know, middle school students. Okay. Do you have any suggestions for me to you know, any some special ways to teach them? Yes. To coach them? I, I strongly recommend you have toys on the table. Toys, yeah. Because one thing, when people walk into a classroom where there are toys on the table, they think, "Wow, oh, yeah, this is like a nursery school." Yeah, they, they find know it straight away. Yeah. The whole point is it creates a fun, playful atmosphere. Yeah. It also introduces lots of colour in their visual field. Okay. Colour is important for learning, um, but also people find that when they can pick up um, a toy and fiddle with it, it helps them listen. They can concentrate on listening concentrate. so much more easily when their hands and their eyes are occupied. Yeah. And so actually, some of the people that come into the room learn faster because they're fiddling with toys. Mm -hmm. So the toys are there as a tactile, they're, they're part of the physical movement. We learn by moving. In fact, if you stop moving, learning stops. Yeah. And if you watch small children, for example, they never stop. The minute a small child is awake, it moves. The only time a small child is still is when it goes to sleep. Okay. Because all of the time it's moving, is learning. All of the time adults are moving, we're yeah. learning. So we move on purpose okay. in the photo reading program. And I would say to your students, move, move, move. Move, it's hard to play games. Sitting still, looking at the phone, is not learning. No. It's missing something in your Okay. Move. Right. So talking about the very young children, what do you think should be the, the youngest children? Who is suitable for this session? Well, what we found over the years, I, I've had some young people on my training program to be 11 years old. Okay. About 11 years is the youngest. Be, below that, they don't really get the, the processes of photo reading. They're not developed enough to be able to take advantage of the expanded methods that okay. they use. So usually young teenagers, 10, 12 years old, yes. they're, they're ready. Okay. In fact, one young man came on the course and I said, what's it like for you? He came with his mum. What's it like for you, I said, with all these adults around? Oh my God, he said, I wish school were like this. I'm having such a brilliant time. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Okay. Yeah, it's just like it. Uh, thank you very much, Bill. You're uh, for, thank you for teaching and sharing. It's a delight. Thank you. Pleasure. I wish to start the video again. Thank you. Thank well, you. I'm looking forward to that too.